Okay, we're in Baden-Baden. The Cranky Chess Classic is now over, 2019. We talk about the games of the ninth round with Grandmaster Jan Gustafsson. And uh, let's start with Anand Svitler. Uh, it was quite a quick game, I think. I think they both were a bit disappointed and wanted to finish their game as soon as possible. Yeah, both on 50%, not much to play for. They played a long theoretical line of the Roy Lopez with 63. The game looks spectacular at first sight, but it had been played before until the moment when Vichy deviated with rook to e3, I think. But most top players will have that line in their computers or some drawing lines there, so not much. Both were fine with the draw and getting the tournament over with. Talking about long variations, Caruana Aronian, they blitzed out their first 30 moves, I think, uh, pretty fast. Yeah, actually a similar story, different variation, but a main line of the Marshall that nowadays, if white goes for this, it's mainly used as a risk-free drawing weapon, where if black puts a foot wrong, he can get into some trouble. But Aronian had a lot of experience in that line, had already played it three times with the black pieces deep into the game, like move 32 or something. So, yeah, Fabiano did not really believe he could win the tournament and went for a risk-free approach. Aronian neutralized him quite easily, so another quick draw there. But the longer game was Nidic against Maya. Nidic won in the end. Quite a good tournament for him, I think, overall. For sure, five out of nine. He was critical of his play early on, but then in the end had a, had a very strong finish. The game today, I have to admit, I haven't looked at it closely yet. It looked very complicated and strange. Nidic, I believe, got a good position when Maya maybe weakened his king with h5 early on. Then he went for some tactics with his d4, knight to b5, got knights to b5 and e6, and the position was very weird, but should have favored knight. It should then, later on, I think in type trouble, he allowed Meyer back into the game. He mixed up his move order, starting with his b4 and stuff, queen f5 first. And after that, it was unclear for a moment until Georg went wrong with king to d8, after which with his passive king. The position is just lost. Had he played king c6, it would have been a mess, but yeah, of course, everyone's tired. In the end, yeah, good result for Karinaj. Come to another game, <clears throat> Vincent Keimer against Vallejo. Quite a wild game. It was quite complicated. Keimer looked quite good out of the opening, but Vallejo bounced back and won. Yeah, and credit to Vallejo. He was the only player who had not won a game yet, and he clearly came to play today, playing a very risky line, the Benoni itself, and then the line he chose with a6 and knight h5. It's quite provocative, but sometimes you have to do these things to create winning chances with black. Then I think computer-wise, Vincent was doing very well for a long time, even though I thought his g4 was a very risky decision. But as usual in these Benoni King's Indian structures, there's always counterplay for black, and I think Paco just had more energy left today and managed to overwhelm Keimer on the complications with his c4, knight d6, f5 counterplay. Became very difficult for, for white to play, and Keimer did not manage to find the right defense and went down. And we come to the last game of the day, the world champion. He also won his last game. Fantastic. He just wants to win every game, I think, at the moment. Yeah. Yeah, I was curious if he wanted to win every game or if he would go for a draw to secure tournament victory. I think it might have helped him that Caruana Aronian looked like a draw early on, and since then no one could catch him, he could play more or less freely. He chose a quiet line of the English, but there was already an indicator. He wasn't looking for any forced draws, but for a full game, and then... I think the key moment of the game comes quite early on. We will have a look at the board where Maxim Vashila Graf decides to sacrifice a pawn for, frankly, not enough compensation, and he would never see it again in Magnus Carlsen. Yeah, what is there to say? Seven and a half out of nine winning super tournaments back to back, reaching 2875 life rating. I haven't looked up his overall performance in 2019, but it must be somewhere in the neighborhood of 2940, something we've never seen. So yeah, it's it's scary. Do you think what does it motivate him, like having this enormous ELO rating, or do you think he said he didn't really believe in 2900, but do you think that might be a goal for him? Even if it's a goal, it doesn't matter if you don't play well, and I think for him the most important thing is that he's reached the dominance he was missing the last couple of years, and that he was talking about that. His favorite player is him from four or five years ago when he had that dominance and these rating levels. Now it's back and to me it looks like he's playing better than ever really. So I don't know what motivates him. I think he just likes winning and he's certainly done a lot of winning recently. Yeah, it's 
Sparta told me that this is the best Magnus he has ever seen. So could be that he is playing like the, his favorite player of four or five years ago again. And so I don't know. It looks, it looks really good. He looks very confident and uh, likes to. It's very dominant, as you say it. Yeah. He also said that the um, being this preparation for the World Championship helped him, I think, quite a lot in these tournaments. What do you think in these three tournaments he won this year? No, of course, you do a lot of work before the World Championship, and he still has some leftover ideas you can see in games here and there that he hasn't used in these tournaments yet, and he came fully armed. That helped him, but also, I guess, just having the monkey off his back to defend his title and playing these gruesome World Championship matches will have helped him now he knows he's world champion for a while and he can play a bit more freely and what happens if he's well prepared and confident we've seen in the last tournaments. Yeah. Let's have a quick word about the other audience favorite I think Vincent Keimer what do you think about him he played quite a, a tournament two, two points out of nine that's what was expected or is it even more what do you think? I think the points don't matter so much if it's like one and a half or two and a half or three. He's shown a very good level of chess and you could see the potential there that it's not like he gets wiped off the board. He's been building good positions and he couldn't always finish it. Often you had this narrative that he got a great position against Magnus or Caruana or the top guys and then a round of 30, 35 also against MVL. He would lose the threat and time trouble and the more experienced players who of course sees every chance, would still outlast him, but they didn't really outclass him, and I think that's something to build on for the future. He's obviously extremely well prepared, working a lot on his openings with Peter Leko. He has a good chess understanding. He's only 14 years old, so two out of nine, if that's good or bad, I guess. It's around rating expectation, but he's shown everybody he can play and that he belongs in this company, so I was, I was impressed and I thought it was a good decision by him to take part. I think so too. And let's go back to the world champion and to the game of today. Let's see one of the critical positions. Yeah, today's game is really the story of one move, which you don't see very often at this level. After a quite opening, we have a relatively typical position in the English opening, where White can still decide if he wants to play in the center with pawn to d4, if he wants to exchange bishops with bishop to h6, or play with a3, b4 on the queen side. So I was expecting a long maneuvering struggle, but Maxime in this position just decided to lash out and play the move b7 to b5. And the problem with that move is it loses a pawn and Maxime would never get enough compensation for that pawn. So what led him to that decision? I struggle to understand. I honestly do not know. I haven't asked him. Magnus said, yeah, he just lost his cool for a moment. And Magnus also seemed quite happy with that gift because he said he felt a little tired, but okay. He doesn't have much choice but taking the pawn and asking Maxime what he's planning to do. And it never became very apparent. In the game after b5, just takes, takes, knight takes b5. Maybe MVL thought that after queen a5, if white takes, rook takes, rook to b8, he gets some Banco gambit style compensation. But after just knight to c3 back, black can really only dream of ever getting compensation. And Magnus stabilizes his position quite effortlessly with rook f to c1, b3, exchange a bishop with bishop h6. And then, well, he didn't always play the computer moves, but it always looked like it was an uphill battle for Maxim Vashila Graf. So something we rarely see at this level, that Black just gives a pawn for really no good reason that early in the opening. Could also have something to do with Magnus' recent play that opponents lose their cool against him or feel they have to do something special early on. But that was a nice gift for the world champion in the last round and allowed him to reach this astronomic score of seven and a half of nine. So yeah. Somewhat an anti-climax, but Magnus won't mind. He got the pawn and the point and the victory.